how is Israel really perceived across the Arab world? Well, there was some shock at how Israeli journalists were treated at the World Cup in Qatar last year. Does that give a true picture? Have the Abraham Accords changed attitudes at all? Well, these are all key questions that we ask on this programme. And my next guest might have some answers for us. Uh, Gabriel Talbes is the Director of Analytic Strategy at Forte. And he's here in the studio. Great to see you, Gabriel. Thank you for Good coming in. Good to see in. you. Thank you. Now, um, so tell us a bit about what you've been doing. You've been looking at uh, engagement with the social media pages of the uh, Israeli Ministry for, for Foreign Affairs. Uh, tell us a bit about your findings, first of right. all. Right. So I, I was specifically looking at the page in Arabic to see how we are perceived in the Arab world and where... Um, which audiences actually come to this page and find, find it interesting. So um, it's interesting, I think, to understand also uh, who finds Israel interesting and where does the Israeli um, Foreign Affairs Ministry have the potential to influence public opinion uh, and where it actually can't. So I had a few interesting findings. First of all, uh, it's really clear that the Gulf countries have the highest engagement rate on these pages. So these are countries with a very small population. So you're talking about the UAE, Bahrain... Yes, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia Kuwait. Right. Okay. Um, uh, so these countries, most of them have a small population, but uh, uh, a lot of the fellowship in these Israeli channels come from there. So we can say that a big portion of the population in these countries actually is looking after what Israel is doing, is interesting in how life is in Israel, interesting in the Israeli position. Um, so this is one thing that I think is worth noting. Maybe it has something to do with the Abraham Accords, but also maybe countries where uh, the relations are more normalized that find Israel more interesting are also the first countries to sign peace accords with Israel. Right, and uh, Kuwait, I think you said, was uh, one of the countries with the, the highest level of engagement, is that right? Because Kuwait, of course, is not a friendly country, there's no uh, normalisation with Kuwait. Right, but still they find uh, Israel probably very interesting and they follow Israeli pages. Um, you drew some interesting conclusions um, about people in Iraq and Yemen, also, of course, not friendly countries uh, to Israel. And, and these are both countries which once had large uh, Jewish populations. What can you tell us about that? Right, so for me, these were the biggest surprises um, of this research uh, because uh, we hear very, very little about these countries, both about Iraq and Yemen uh, on the news and with regards to their relations to Israel. But uh, tens of thousands of people from these countries, very big communities of people, actually follow Israeli channels. And I asked myself why. From looking at the comments of some of the Iraqi and uh, Yemenite uh, followers, you can see there's a pattern that many of them are talking about the Jewish heritage of their countries and the, the way they feel uh, some pride in it and connection with it. So I think that could be part of the explanation. Was, was that quite unexpected? Yes, for me it was quite unexpected. But particularly Iraq, because of course it is illegal for an Iraqi citizen to, to speak to an Israeli citizen. Right, but the Jewish community in Iraq was very influential, very important, and many Iraqis know that. Also, Iraq has a substantial population of Kurds, which tend to have a generally a pro-Israel um, opinion. Uh, the, the, the Kurdish part of the country right. in the north, which has a, a more pro-Israel uh, stance, absolutely. Um, what about Oman? Did you get any information from Oman? Oman is a country uh, which also followed Iraq and recently said it would be a criminal offence to have a relationship with an Israeli citizen. So there are quite a lot of Omanis that follow Israeli channels, but um, not at the rate that the Gulf, other Gulf countries, uh, I'd say. And also they have a small population generally, so it doesn't account for a big part of the fellowship in these uh, channels. OK, so we're talking about high levels of engagement. Now, we've had a lot of surveys um, recently which say that uh, quite large percentages of people in those countries, uh, the UAE, Bahrain, uh, etc., don't actually support deeper integration mm -hmm. uh, with Israel. So we can't really interpret uh, higher engagement with support for Israel, can we? Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, engagement doesn't mean support. Uh, and in fact, a lot of the, uh, the followers of these channels do their best to abuse the channels uh, and to write negative opinions about Israel. But still, I think it's important to note that these channels are sort of a window of the Israeli perspective to the Arab world. And uh, 
it gives an opportunity for Arab re read readers to perceive um, how Israelis think of things. And it, on the long run, I believe, promotes understanding and normalization. Absolutely. And, and you did this all um, off kind of your own initiative um, on social media. Can you tell us a bit about the system you, you used to do that? Right. So it's a, a rather basic research that's based on uh, information that Twitter can provide you uh, using their um, API. Uh, generally, you can uh, um, get the data of followers of a certain page and draw some more uh, uh, elaborate conclusions in comparison to what you can do manually by looking at uh, uh, the comments and the individual followers.